In this video, I'm going to teach you how to seam stockinette stitch in a horizontal seam. So here I have two swatches that I made and I put them together with the bind off edges together because you will often um, do a horizontal seam at the top of your shoulders in a sweater and you will be seaming two bind off edges together. Now, it doesn't matter whether you do two bind off edges together, a cast on and a bind off edge or two cast on edges. It's the same regardless of which um, way you have your pieces positioned. So one of the important things to recognize in seaming is that your stitches make V's and you have columns of V's and in between the columns of V's you have columns of upside down V's. So what we are going to be looking at in these swatches when you're doing this is the, with the swatch closest to you, you're going to want to look for the upside down Vs. And on the swatch further from you, you want to look for the right side up Vs. And that will make sense in just a minute. We are always going to seam from the front. So to begin the seam, I'm going to pick up the piece that's closest to me. And I'm going to look for the first column of upside down Vs. Now here is an upside down V but there's one right here to the right of it. it. The edge stitch is often a little bit wonky. So sometimes I'll look for the first one that's clear to me is oftentimes the second one in, and then I'll go to the right to find the first one. And I want to insert the needle under both legs of that upside down V and bring the yarn through. Leave yourself about a six inch tail so you can sew that in later. Then on the top, piece, we are going to look for the right side up Vs. So it'll be a regular knit stitch. And again, here's a column of right side up Vs. And I'm going to go to the right. My first column of right side up Vs is a little bit wonky because it's the edge stitch. But right here, we're going to go under both legs of the bottom V in that column. Then we're going to come back to our first piece and insert the yarn in the same space it's coming out of and pick up the legs of the next upside down V. Right there. Bring the yarn through. Go up to your other piece. Find the legs of the right side up V, so the regular size the regular uh, knit stitch and put your needle through those two legs. So you can clearly see the V right above the one I'm working on. I'm grabbing the two legs of that bottom V, which is a regular knit stitch. Now on the bottom piece, we're coming back and we're looking for the upside down V. I'm going to insert my yarn where it came out from doing the last stitch and pick up the two legs of the top of the column of upside down V's. And we're going to keep going the whole way across our piece like this. I'm not pulling my stitches tight right now. We will do that in a minute. So, you know, get a few inches, not a few inches, an inch or two of stitches done before you pull your stitches tight. Um, now this seam can either be done seamless or it can be done uh, pull tighter and um, to create a more visible seam, but it will be a sturdier seam. So here you can see I've gotten several stitches done and let's get the light right. Come on. All right, my light didn't want to cooperate with me. Here we go. You can see if I isolate that, that yellow stitch that I made is making a V and it's connecting this column of V's with this column of V's. And then this stitch next to it, same thing. It's making a V and it's connecting this column of V's with this column of V's. Now I can either pull this very tight to make a nice sturdy seam. And I will do that right now. And it's going to look like this. And you can see you cannot see the seaming yarn from the front. It leaves a, um, 
bit of a bump on the back. This is what it looks like on the back. Now, if we did not want to pull that seam so tight, if I loosen it up here, and we make those stitches about the same tension as the knitting we did, then um, the seam will be more invisible and it will not be as sturdy as if you pull it tight, but it will look nicer from the outside. Now the inside or the wrong side is still going to have that bump. This isn't the same as doing Kitchener stitch, but it is going to give you a much neater looking seam from the outside. And if I was using the same color yarn and I tightened those stitches up just a hair more so they match the tension of my knitting, you can see how that would make a nice invisible seam going across there. Now when you get to the end of your piece, you would just sew in both ends of your seaming tail, just like you sew in the ends of any other tail in your knitting project.